Greetings! In a previous YouTube on non-circulating hydroponic tomatoes, nutrient solution levels were automatically maintained by a float valve sump assembly. And the nutrient solution was routed through a hole in the bottom of the growing container. Instead, let's see if it's possible to add the nutrient solution through the top of the container. We'll call this the float valve siphon concept. We'll start with a small tank of water which flows to a float valve. A one and a half inch water level is maintained in the container. We will try to create a siphon and flow the water over the concrete block into the container on the right side. All of the air must be excluded from the siphon tube. The float valve sump assembly on the left side is simply raised above the concrete block and water begins to flow in the container on the right side. Then the float valve sump assembly is placed back in its original position. The end of the tube on the supply side must always be below the water level. The end of the tube on the receiving side must always be lower then the supply side water level. The water is flowing. It works. The water continues to flow until it becomes one and a half inches deep, which is the same water level as the float valve sump assembly on the left. Now let's try to maintain a nutrient solution level in a hydroponic growing container. Tubing is routed from the bottom of a water supply tank to about five inches from the top of the tank. When the water level is above the tubing, water will automatically flow to the top of the float valve. The float valve must be lower than the water level. A yogurt container float valve will be used. Extruded polystyrene blocks float on top of a rising water level. And this forces the neoprene foam against the tubing connector nozzle to seal off the water flow. The float valve is easily assembled. The float valve siphon apparatus will be tested by adding water to a transparent juice container. The float valve is lifted. This excludes air from the siphon tube. Water begins to flow, and the float valve is placed back down. Water continues to flow, and I'm convinced that this system will work. Next, we'll try to add water to a three gallon food grade bucket, which will eventually be used to grow tomatoes. Water is flowing in the siphon tube. The tube is placed in the growing container. The float valve is lifted. Water begins to flow. The float valve is placed back down again. And water continues to flow. Eventually, about three inches have flowed into the growing container. As expected, the float valve also appears to maintain about a three inch water depth. Now we'll raise the float valve by one and a half inches. The water in the growing container also raised one and a half inches. The water depth is now four and a half inches. Just for fun, let's raise the float valve another one and a half inches. And what do you know, the water level raised another one and a half inches to six inches deep. Nutrient solution is lost from the growing container by evaporation and transpiration, but the level remains the same. 
The float valve siphon apparatus replaces the lost solution up to the level of the solution in the float valve. By now, the water tank level has dropped below the exit hole. But the water will continue to flow all the way to the bottom of the tank as long as the float valve is lower. The tubing has become a siphon. If the siphon becomes disabled because of air entry, then just raise the float valve to remove the bubbles and you're back in business. Other types of float valves and float valve siphon arrangements may also be used and probably will work even better than my crude model. So there you have it, a float valve siphon device to maintain the nutrient solution level in hydroponic growing containers. Mm -hmm.